So if you put them in the round pen with the, in the intention to just get the edge off and this horse is the most unhappy thing you've ever seen and got out of the wrong side out of the stall and you're going to be the target, we're going to go through the contract. Okay. Okay, now you've brought it to a place where there's a set procedure. And until you can do this, we're not going to change. So by all means, you shift it either way. But I'm hoping you're understanding a little bit about the round pen. Now, one thing you need to know, this procedure in the round pen will take no more than 20 to 30 minutes. In the back of my seat. No more than. So it might be 10, but no more than 30 minutes to create this contract. If it's taking longer, you need to take time out and look at what you're doing. It means you, you, you're not doing something right, basically. Okay. So basically, the, I mean, the, when you just want to take the, the edge off, you would still employ all the same body language. Yes. And you do turn them and stuff, but you just, you're, it's just purely that your intention is. There. Yes. Because the intention might be that they do two to three laps rather than eight to nine revolutions. So again, you're gauging the feel. What does she need to get the edge off? She might do 20 just to race round. She may be able to race because it's a controlled race, or you may want to shut her down, but suddenly it's becoming a conversation like you and I now. Now we're discussing it and we're not going paragraph by paragraph, and that's okay. And it will become clear as you see all your horses today. You know, every horse has a voice, Every horse has an opinion in this round pen, so we're going to take whatever they bring to the table with you guys. You know, if they might be in there 30 minutes, if Kai decides to do what he did yesterday, he's going to be in there a little while till we get the rhythm and the fluidity. How do I look at, how are we looking at the fact that he did this last year? It's fine. That's a year, year out, okay. and this is a good time to do it again, and yesterday his behavior wasn't where we want it to be. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. So we're going to renegotiate. Yeah. Something yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You saw two completely opposite ends of the spectrum in the same horse. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and no different really than Julie to yours, because he might be so soft and kind, and he may say everything right off the bat, but he's still going to have to go through it. You're still looking for rhythm and you're going to go up to the canter and down to the walk, and you're still going to experiment yes, with the language. He might look away, because I believe he was abused before I got him. Okay, so he tilts his head a little he bit. It's, it's going to be interesting. And for the auditors, I want you guys to be active participants. So that means that you're watching the behavior uh, of the horse. I'd like you to see how much of the ears locked on because when people are in there for the first time, I'm not going to expect you to see it all. I'm not going to. Some of you will. <laughs> some, of you, some, of you, some of you I'll be saying how much of that ears locked on, you know, and I, and I expect you to know. Others, you're going to go, what ear? I was concentrating on my body. And, okay, no problem. So I want the, everybody watching to be able to see things. Where is the sweet spot? Because, again, I'm not expecting people to see the sweet spot the first time, but I do expect the spectators to see it. You need to be watching close enough to say and tell them at, at what time on the clock. So the round pen door is going to be 12 o'clock. And so everything else will go from there. And you need to be able to say if it's 3 or 4 o'clock or 7 or 8 o'clock that you're seeing the sweet spot occur so that you can help out. But by the end of it also, we're looking at character assessments from these horses. We're looking to say, who are they today? Not judge them from who they were yesterday, but who are they today and what have we learned about them that's new today? Okay? So any more questions on this? I'm sorry, I have one more question. Yes, yeah, not, not a problem. Not <laughs> taking the edge off things. So, I mean, you said if, if they, you know, buck and doing the contract part, you want to take them down a step. So what if you want them to express their energy or get out some yayas? Just let them go. Yes, and I will encourage you to, to walk forward 
always in the round pen, even if they're going and having their fun, because if you stand in the middle, you're not actively involved. And then the other thing with that is if, if the horse is moving around you and just having fun, and then they decide to come in real quick, you're not involved. So you need to be driving them. Even though they're moving, you're driving, so you're actively part of it, and then you can decide. And then that doesn't count as the revolutions. It doesn't count until you have some kind of direction going. So they might do that for six, seven laps, and then you start working. Okay? Do you lunge? I don't lunge. Why not? Uh, because I find that it creates a very unbalanced horse if it's done incorrectly. Only if it's done incorrectly. And the majority of people don't know how to lunge correctly. And therefore, any horse that's been lunged incorrectly who put them in the round pen, they will hold their nose to the outside. Avocados. For life, they'll hold their nose for the outside. And so, with that, it brings an out of alignment all the way from the neck to the back. And um, th that's basically it. I've had one horse, he carried his neck here. I've never seen anything like it in my life. He carried it by his shoulder. He was that much into pressure, and the lunging had gone wrong. Always carried it? Like yeah, he that's was it. Just doing his thing? He was like that. that would be at a, in a round pen environment, so every time he thinks he's on a circle, he, he would carry his head out because he's into pressure. And the pressure with the lunging, if you hold your nose, the pressure comes this side. They lean into pressure, they carry their nose out. Now, if you put the side reins on and you tack them up correctly, great tool. But the majority of people don't, they clip on. So uh, that's why I don't. I prefer the two lines. The two lines are phenomenal. They create a balanced horse, a self-carriage on the horse. You can work them simultaneously. You're working on the stop. You're, you're creating a nice mouth. I like the two lines more. And, and I've dealt with remedial issues that way and solved remedial problems that you wouldn't be able to do on the lunge necessarily. You can help a bolting horse and so on. So they're great. Once you get the two lines on the control, people love them. Mm.